ஹாய் ஹலோ வணக்கம் அண்ட் வெல்கம் பேக் டு எட் அனதர் எபிசோட் ஆன் லிட்டில் ஸ்லா யூடியூப் சேனல் ஸோ திஸ் எபிசோட் இஸ் அ பிகினிங் ஆஃப் தி அப்ஸ்கில்லிங் ஆஃப் பர்ஃபார்மன்ஸ் டெஸ்டிங் ஸோ இன் கேஸ் இஃப் யூ ஆர் அ ஃபங்க்ஷனல் டெஸ்டர் ஹூ வான்ஸ் டு மூவ் டு பர்ஃபார்மன்ஸ் டெஸ்டிங் ஆர் இன்ஜினியரிங் ஆர் இஃப் யூ ஆர் சம் ஒன் ஹூ இஸ் இன் டு பர்ஃபார்மன்ஸ் டெஸ்டிங் அண்ட் யூ வாண்ட் டு grow bigger in the area of performance engineering are you are someone who is an automation tester and you want to do a performance testing this episode of videos is going to be an upskilling of upskilling for you and it's going to open lots of lots of doors for you to know understand and how to do the performance testing from scratch to the end so this is the num part 1 episode of 100 days of videos so from today onwards i'm going to upload one video per day discussing about the upskilling of your knowledge on performance testing and engineering and in fact this will definitely help you in your daily day to day activity day to day work and also this will help you in clearing your interviews because many of our subscribers have asked uh, help or support or discussions to help them in their interviews by giving my knowledge so the, by watching this videos i answered most of the faqs in these videos and this will definitely help you to engage improve and make sure you get a good placement in your interviews so i welcome you all to little sir youtube channel if you really want to improve your performance testing knowledge in the next 100 days please don't forget to subscribe to our channel mainly subscribe i put a notification for this for our video so that you get your daily videos and if you really want to be part of a member so that you can get your videos early please don't forget to subscribe to our channel join as a member i have shared the link in the description so now we will move on to the first day first topic so here we are going to discuss about the core activities that any performance tester should know so today i will take you through the top 7 or the core 7 activities in brief and we will see them what are all they like what are all the activities especially talks about in a in a daily videos so the first part is i'm going to just give you an idea of it's going to be a brief on what are all the activities the top activities and how we are going to do that so the first activity is identifying the test environment so as a performance tester you have to begin by meticulously identifying both the physical test environment and the production environment so why should you know this because this involves understanding the hardware the software and the network configuration in each setting and a comprehensive understanding or a comprehensive grasping of the entire test environment at the outset enables more efficient test design and planning and this helps you in early identification of any potential testing ta- challenges that may arise throughout the project's life cycle and that's the reason we have to identify the test environment and then it is very essential to periodically revisit this process as the project progresses which ensures alignment with the evolving project requirements and changes in the production in- environments so that is the reason we have to identify the test environment because as i told you we have to periodically revisit this process of identifying the test environment as the project progresses because we have to ensure that there is an alignment with the project requirement and the changes in the production environment so the second part is identifying the performance acceptance criteria and this is a very critical part because when the client or when the business defines their specific business performance metrics or when they want us to collect or we have to define the performance metrics and that's very critical because there are like lot of lots and lots of performance metrics and we have to be very particular in what performance metrics are we going to collect such as response times the throughput the resource utilization goals and what are the constraints in the resource utilizations so response times typically addresses the users concerns the throughput addresses the business objectives and the resource utilization focuses on system performance so these are the three major performance metrics and they all have an objective so as again i repeat it so the response times addresses the users concerns 
the throughput addresses the business objectives and the resource utilization focuses on systems performance. So on top of these metrics, identifying the project success criteria beyond these metrics. So we have to identify the what are all the metrics that makes the project as a successful one. So for example, by evaluating how different configuration settings impact the performance to optimize the system behavior effectively. So that is how we identify the performance acceptance criteria and we make sure that everything works fine. And moving on to the third part, which is planning and designing tests. So we have to identify the key usage scenarios by considering, by considering the variability among representative users and how to simulate it effectively. And that's how we have to plan and design our tests. And then once we have identified the key usage scenarios, and by considering the variability among representative users, we then have to move to the next part, which is defining the test data requirements. And we have to establish the metrics that we have to collect during the testing. So once we have collected these part, that is the test data requirement and by identifying the key usage scenarios, moving on to the last part is the consolidating the information into models of system usage to guide the test implementation the execution and the analysis effectively. So by doing all these three, we can do our planning and the designing of the test. So first part is identifying the key usage scenarios. The second part is defining the test data requirement and establishing metrics. The third part is by consolidating this information into models of system, the usage to guide test implementation. So these information will help us to do the test implementation, the execution and the analysis effectively. So now the activity part four, which is the configuring of test environment. So when it comes to configuring of test environment, we have to, you have to prepare the test environment and you have to ensure that it aligns with the test strategy and accommodates the features and components available for testing, right? So we have to understand that we have to prepare the test environment, but also the test environment should align with the test strategies and it also should accommodate the features and the components which are available for testing. So once we have the test environment, we have to instrument the test environment for resource monitoring as necessary to gather performance data accurately. So what is instrumenting? So we have to make sure that it is connected to a profiler or it is connected to a performance monitoring tool. So in that way, you can configure the test environment and we can make sure that it is connected for the resource monitoring and moving on to the fifth part or the fifth activity which is the implementing of the test design so so far we have did the planning and test design designing the test we have identified the performance acceptance criteria we did configure the test environment so the next part is implementing the test design where we have to develop the performance tests based on the te defined test design so that we have already defined the test design in our previous uh, Basis. So we have to develop our performance test based on those test design and we have to ensure that they accurately reflect the identified usage scenarios and the performance goals. And that's very important because all our performance testing activities should be based on our test design and also they should reflect the scenarios and the performance goals. And then the sixth activity is the executing of the test. So, so far we have designed everything. We have implemented the test design. So the next part is we have to execute the test by running and monitoring the performance test and by validating the test data and the results collection processes. So we have to do all these in the execution phase that is in the activity six. And then we have to execute the validated test for doing our analysis. And also we have to continuously monitor both the test and the test environment for any deviations or anomalies. And that's very important because running a test can be done by the tool and we have no work to do. But on top of that, we have to continuously monitor the test and the test environment. And then the last activity, which is the analyzing the results, reports and the retest. So we have to consolidate and share the data with the stakeholders. It can be business, the developers, the business analyst or anybody in the team. So we have to share the results with the stakeholders and we have to analyze it both individually and collaboratively as a cross-functional team. 
on top of this we have to reprioritize any demanding test based on the analysis our findings and re-execute them if it isn't really needed so after we share our code the developers will sit they'll do the tuning process and then they'll come back with the same set of uh, scenarios and then we have to do a retesting we have to re-execute them and we have to come up with the we have to conclude the testing for that specific scenario and the configuration once all the metric values are within the accepted limits the thresholds have to remain unviolated and all the desired information had been collected so this is the last phase that is analyzing the results creating a report doing a retest based on the requirement that if there are any tunings that has been done so we have to do a retest and then once everything is done we have to conclude the testing for the scenario and configuration with whatever we have did and make sure that all the metric values are within the accepted limits the thresholds remain unviolated and all the desired information has been collected so by following these processes meticulously the planned activities the performance testing teams can ensure a thorough and effective evaluation of system performance ultimately contributing to the overall success of the project so with that we come to an end on our day one video tomorrow in our next video we'll discuss about the first activity that's a very important activity so we will see that in detail and that activity is going to be identifying the test environment so as i have mentioned to you already please do subscribe to our channel enable your notification button so that you get all my videos immediately and this is going to be the first day first video and tomorrow we'll meet up in the day two video so don't forget to subscribe to our channel like share subscribe to your friends and colleagues so until i meet you in another interesting video it's bye bye from asan shanmugam and little slaw